how are you? I'm good. How are you, Raquel? I am doing well. What time is it there right now? It's morning. It's 9.30 here in Beijing. Oh, okay. Well, uh, good morning. <laughs> a bright and early for you. But I'm very excited. Oh, for today. I appreciate, I appreciate the uh, first Zoom of the morning, but I'm really excited that we're getting to do this interview. I just, I got to ask, uh, how has the pr- past year in lockdown been for you slash quarantine? Man, I, so I just came back from LA. I actually started off uh, 2020 as a concert director for an artist who uh, is very popular in the the idol industry. He was on the uh, Chinese version of Produce 101 and he was a top 10, um, top 10 contestant. And those kids on those shows amassed massive fan bases. So we did like two, 3000 uh, people like, early 2020 and we were planning on touring the rest of 2020 together but i told them i was going to go to la to see my parents and i'll be right back and then i kind of got stuck (laughs) in la for a long time oh my god so you definitely weren't right back right 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 yeah (laughs) that's crazy but i know obviously you know quarantine you were stuck in la for a little bit but you released some music for yourself which was great so is that kind of how that turned into this Yes. So that the music that I released in 2020, um, you know, you, you, a lot of people kind of had to reinvent themselves uh, in 2020. And I, I kind of had to do that before. I don't know if you know uh, my history, um, where I, I used to be in a K-pop, kind of a K-pop, like a rock band. And I was a full-time bassist, but my left hand was cut off and reattached in a f- it was like a freak accident. And so I had to adapt before and I felt very prepared for this uh, lockdown situation. And I really wanted to focus on making the most of it. So um, I took it as an opportunity to kind of connect digitally with my fans. And yeah, it, we ended up releasing an album together. And I say we, because I couldn't have done it without my fans. Uh, truthfully, they, they funded, they inspired, they motivated me to create the album and they facilitated it as well, along with Kat. I don't know if you don't know Kat, your followers probably. Yeah, she's a great That's friend. the best. She's the absolute best. So Kat is the person who organized, helped organize this interview and we are so, so thankful to her. But I mean, 2020, I feel like is the year of, of pivoting for not just, you know, artists like you, but for myself as well. And we've just really discovered ourselves and kind of I feel like a new chapter for who we really are and I feel like this new chapter definitely obviously includes your release that is coming out soon called Heavy so we got to get into that I'm, I'm so excited I'm so excited for your fans too because you did include them a lot in this um comes out March 26 so how did you when did you start writing the song first of all has it been something that you started in 2020 or was it recent no, I, I started that in 2020 when the height of the pandemic terror kind of settled in. I think there was like a synchronized, right, there was like a synchronized uh, depression. I, there was a palpable a weight on my shoulders, and I felt like a lot of people could also feel that as well. I don't know if that was just in my head. Oh, definitely. Right. So it felt heavy. And the way that I deal with, the, the way that I process things that are happening to me is just to write music. So in 2020, I wrote about 50 songs and the ones that um, I'm releasing are the ones that I felt uh, worthy to make the cut. And so we actually shot a video when I say we, I mean, the guy, Brad Wong is the guy who directs my visuals for almost everything I do. And we, we shot, it's the last video we shot in LA right before I left back to China. The video is so good. I can't wait for you guys to see it, your fans to see it because it's just so special. Like I I told you that when I watched it and it made me just feel something. And there's so many music videos right now that are so cool and using all the CG and, and it's just like you're on another planet literally watching it, but yours is doing that in a really heartfelt way. And how did you kind of make that decision to A, have your fans involved? I mean, they're pretty much involved in, I mean, I guess the post-production kind of aspect of it. When did you kind of make that decision and how did you manage 
all of the submissions for it because I'm sure it was overwhelming. I told him, I told Brad that I wanted to integrate my my fans into my work a little more. And I think that's happening a lot today. You can see online how a lot of different artists are starting to get into NFTs and just really have uh, the consumer, the art, the, the audience be part of the product. But before all that came around, I just, I don't know. I, I was discussing it with my, my director and he said, uh, we should just invite them to do different types of artwork to um, be heavily involved in the post-production aspect of it. So you get to see animations um, actually done by my fans and just super talented people that I did not expect to have this many submissions. Um, we were kind of overwhelmed and he definitely carried the load in terms of managing all that because I'm not the best manager of you know, visual artwork or whatever. You're the artist. It's okay. That's not your job. Yeah, I just, I like to take care of the sound. Yeah, that's, that's my strength. I think. Understandable. Yeah. I, I can only imagine the amount of submissions and I mean, yeah. obviously he kind of handled most of that, but were you ever like, Oh, I want this to go here or maybe this, or, or were you kind of involved in that? Or it was just more of like, yeah, dude, it looks dope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for the most part, I am a pretty easy client when it comes to visuals because I just happen to work with super talented directors. But for this project, I definitely did take the reins um, and let him know which direction I wanted to go, which parts I, I wanted to have the different cuts at. Because when we just saw the raw footage, it was a, a steady cam um, going around and with a few cuts. Uh, there, there were parts where we felt like we could highlight the emotional tension and uh, the explosiveness of the moment. Um, there, you guys will see if you watch the video, there are different scenes where I'm making these kind of, I guess, explosive actions. And when we're filming, there's nothing happening, obviously. But I feel like the artists, the fans really help that come to life. So basically what you're saying is you're a great actor because you knew this, this was happening and it worked. Yes. <laughs> that's what it is so you produce uh and write a ton in china do you approach that music differently than if it was your own um yes definitely because there you know before i came to china i really didn't know uh, what the market was like in terms of talent because i've you know being in america i grew up in america and i lived in korea and so I listened to a lot of American music and I listened to a lot of Korean music. I never listened to Chinese music and no idea what to expect. I'd heard of a couple artists um, like Jay Chow because my Chinese friends would talk about him, but I had no idea what he's talking about. When you're in the mix, you know, it's always different when you're in the mix. It's shocking how many talented people that I've never heard of outside of the country. But when you're inside, um, like, for example, there's a girl that I'm working with right now. Her name is Shan Yi Chun. I'm sure you've never heard of her. She's like this 19-year-old kid. Um, I don't think she's ever heard of Michael Jackson. I don't, I don't think she knows about these insane artists overseas. But she is probably the best singer I've ever heard in my life. And I've worked with some of the top singers in the world. Um, she just has it naturally. And it's just within her. And so when you work with artists that are overwhelmingly talented like this, you can, I can't write songs that I would write for me. I'm no Bruno Mars, <laughs> you know, I'm no, I'm no uh, Justin Bieber. I have a production style, but when you're working as a producer, you're making a series of decisions that can highlight that artist's strengths. And this artist's strengths, her ceiling is just way higher than the average singer. And so I have to write differently for her. It's crazy. I feel like sometimes we can be a little bit just... I don't know, not open-minded and just not realize how many talented people are all, all over this world. And I mean, that's definitely even something I'm trying to do with my channel alone is be like, there are so many talented people everywhere. Be a little awesome. open-minded and pay attention. And, you know, if that's one thing I can accomplish, then I'm doing something right, I guess. Right. I track. You're on the right track. Okay. You've said before, if you have a voice, uh, be careful with what you say. Does this ever become a struggle when you're writing music? Do you ever kind of teeter and you're like, oh, I really want to talk about this, but it might be too much or this is just too much in general. I don't want to go down that 
emotional rabbit hole. No, in terms of writing music and writing lyrics about the emotion, I think it's important to be honest. Um, I think it's important not to try to just gather hype and just try to try to, when I say you got to be careful with what you say, I think the most important thing is to understand that your actions and your words can affect other people. But as long as you're authentic about it, you're not um, just clout chasing or being abrasive with it. And not, not even abrasive. I thought, you, you, just be you. You know, so I feel like it's so in the attention economy that we have right now, it's so easy to kind of to polarize all your emotions and try to use that to to make a career. Right. Uh, that I, maybe in the past, I was guilty of some of that Maybe when I was like a kid or now I'm, I'm over 30. I'm not, I'm not a little kid anymore. So uh, I, I understand the you know, the, the desire, uh, for the attention, but yeah, it's kind I, of like an appeal, I'd say an appeal for it. Right. But the most important thing I think is to stay, uh, stay true to your words and make sure you mean what you say. And also understand like in the past, I, I was very, I wrote a song called the light and my entire solo career is based off of this song. Uh, because after my accident, I had some really dark times. I, I went through severe depression because uh, the paradigm shifting moment of uh, going from eight hours of practicing bass a day to not being able to play guitar. It just sounded horrible when I played and having the ear to know that it sounded terrible. Um, it, it led me to some dark places. And then the way I express myself is writing music so those songs were extremely dark i needed to write those songs you know i needed to get that out of me somehow um, but i didn't need to put that out into the world because i know i have a lot of people looking up to me and i didn't want to bring them down so i think that's what i meant when i said you need to be careful with what you say just know that your words will affect other people obviously a solo independent artist do you have a core group of people that you send music around to or any ideas and okay. they help you yay or nay it <laughs> i do i so um i send my music to cat yeah <laughs> she always she's always so positive so i'm like man i can't believe her um she's just she's just saying it's dope <laughs> <laughs> and i i send it to my friend amber uh, she was in uh, a group called FX. Uh, she, I'm sure if you know K-pop, that, that you might have heard, heard about her. She's helped me a lot throughout my career. And actually, I just wrote a song and sent it to her, and she just said, give me that song. <laughs> and so I wanted to release it but for myself. But um, honestly, Amber's helped me out so much in my life. She's actually helped uh, pay for some of the music videos that we've done. Uh, She's gone above and beyond. She's an angel. So I just decided I'd just give it to her because she's just such a good friend. So I decided to give her that song. And then I wrote another song. And then she wanted that one too. And I said, no. Because like that was mine. <laughs> yeah, just taking all my music. So um, yeah, I sent it to Amber and I sent it to my buddy Enoch. I have a few friends and a few producers that I trust. And I get their opinion on it. And I, I make adjustments. Has there ever been a time where they've been like, this is awful. <laughs> and you yeah. adjust it. Yeah. <laughs> or you just completely no. next idea. No, absolutely. Because um, Enoch, Enoch is one of my best friends. He's also the singer of a group called Fike. I brought him on a few shows that we did with Subculture. Mm -hmm. And um, he is a very talented engineer who is incapable of really lying. He, he, He's the kind of guy when someone he's vocal directing someone and they're terrible, he'll be like, that was great. And his face will just look like so pissed off. <laughs> he'll be like, That's amazing. <laughs> that was great. <sighs> like he, he has, a, he can't hide it. It's just deep sign. You're like, That's a lie. Yeah, yeah. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. So I sent him when I first started listening to future bass, I think that was like six years ago, six, five, six years ago. I was really into flume. If you're in the EDM okay, world. Yep. 
really into Flume. Like Flume kind of created this sound with all these LFOs and mm -hmm. uh, super saws and just beautiful female vo girl vocals that um, he really changed the landscape of EDM, I feel. Um, and I was trying to do it and I had no business doing it in the beginning. I was Because I'm coming from the world of metal, K-pop and pop rock. So I was closer to Maroon 5 than Flume <laughs> at that point. Right. And then he listened to it and then he had no reaction. We we're listening to him in the car and I was like hoping to get some kind of reaction from him. I was like, hey, what do you think? He's like, that's terrible. <laughs> you straight up just said, that's, that's terrible. You were super hype and he was not having it. Right. And you know what? Honestly, I loved it. I, I loved him for that because it, somebody could be like, oh, I think it's cool, you know, but when you're in the mix, it's hard to tell. Just like when you're totally out of it, when you're in it too much, you can't really tell uh, exactly how how it is. But he he didn't mean it in a malicious way. Mm -hmm. He meant it in a constructive way. And I totally appreciated that. He's like, first of all, the balance is totally wrong. Secondly, there are 16-year-old kids that just wipe, wipe the floor with you in this genre. And He's like, you need to focus on blah, 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 because he actually has the expertise on how to do that, to, to construct these, these tracks that sound beautiful. And so honestly, from that experience, I got way better. I just got, I, I, I just pumped out a ton of terrible tracks and then eventually got to some that sound really good. If you're a creative, you need to have friends who are constructive because otherwise you have no, I feel like no sense of reality, even, even with content creation or anything I do, I have to send it to people and get their opinion or else I'm just gonna be like, wow, I'm great. This is amazing. And someone's gotta be like, no, Raquel, it actually is awful. This is a horrible edit. Don't do this. Like, don't, You don't need to take it that far. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, bring me back down to earth a little bit. I appreciate it. I, I get it. But you did mention EDM. So I'm gonna go there because I come from an EDM background. I was telling you off camera, I used to work for an EDM radio station and, and loved that world so, so much. So what are we getting some more EDM James? So I actually, there's a couple of things. I wrote an entire EDM EP and I have features from some super talented singers, including some, some girls that I feel, I, I just feel like female vocals on EDM just sounds, uh, there's something beautiful. It's just, another it's level, like, right. It just, it just, it just works. Uh, but it didn't feel right for this moment and i was waiting for the i shot a music video for that edm project okay but and and honestly it sounds closer to slander and said the sky okay um, a little more like porter robinson more emotional edm um more than it's not like slap house or um any like hard style hmm. but so it, it kind of stays true to the genres that i feel i i do best um, but yeah, I kind of put that on the side for now because I, one, I finished the music video for a couple of other songs. I, I, like I said, I wrote like 50 tracks last year and I finished a lo-fi EP and that one just feels right for this moment. So the EDM project will still come, but for now I'm focusing on the lo-fi EP with the release of Heavy uh, on the 26th, um, wherever you are. Do you, do you ever see yourself going back into the K-pop world? Ever, I, my old singer Moon. I, recently, I've been writing with him, and he has played some pretty huge songs for some big artists, including God Seven, um, and Eyes One, and a ton of other uh, really massive K-pop stars. There's just so many big K-pop groups now; it's overwhelming. I guess That's I will venture back into that world. Dun dun dun! I'm like, yes, give the give the fans that hope. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon has been a great way to stay connected with your fans. So what can they expect that you're dropping next on there? Um, so I recently launched something called a special offer where every single person who signs up for what I call the Fox tier, it's like the $5 tier and above until the end of March, we'll receive a logo pin, which is a, it's a physical item that they can take home and put on their backpack or put on whatever and uh the fa i let the fans vote and that's the item that they picked and that's what they wanted to distribute to all the new people as well so um, i really take into account what the patrons and what we call ourselves the wolf gang 
I really take into account what they suggest, um, including songs on the EP, including lyrics, including different melodies. Like I, I, they're really part of the DNA of everything I create. And I think this is the new music economy. You know, there's, you can either get put on a massive playlist if you're lucky enough to know like the right people um, at like Apple or Spotify um, or, or another huge distributor um, or, or you can really harness your, your fans and uh, let them be part of the experience. And both options are great. Um, but you, you got to do the best you can with what you got, you know, and right now I'm lucky enough to have super loyal fans and I'm moving forward with them. No, you are completely, you know, doing it the right way. I think people are so focused on getting on streaming sites and, and doing all of that. And they think that's a way to be connected with your fans, but there's so much more out there now, especially 2021. So you are definitely taking it to the next level, which is so appreciative. I got to ask you, what songs are you listening to right now? What is constantly being played on your phone? So I, I can't stop listening to Zed and Kehlani's, um, uh, uh, good, good. Da, 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 da. Uh, good thing, good thing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I got it. So I keep listening to Zed and Kehlani's good thing, and I keep listening to Post Malone's. Um, I think he did it with Grimes. Oh, not not Grimes, Graves. Um, came up. He has a song with Flostradamus called "Came Up," and sorry, I'm just these songs are just like coming back to me now x ambassadors boom oh x ambassadors is so good so good i listened to them uh to the interview that he did with uh on a podcast on spotify called and the writer is and <clears throat> he seems like a genius the the the, the singer of yeah. x ambassadors um there there's just so, i love songs that make me feel pumped or make me feel really emotional. And I think right now, those are the tracks uh, that are getting to me. I'm also found out a good friend of mine just won a Grammy um, for mixing Nas's album. And so I was listening to, uh, to Nas's new album. And yeah, I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm always hunting for inspiration. So every day I listen to new music for about an hour. That helps out, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm the same way. I always say I'm either super hype in my music or super emo or songwriter. (laughs) There's no in between and I'll be working out and listening to singer songwriter music, like wanting to cry, but it's hyping me up in a weird way. I don't know. It works sometimes, you know? I totally get you. What is next for you, James? Next for me is Heavy. It's releasing March 26th and it is kind of the culmination of everything that I do best. If you haven't heard my music before and you're a listener of Raquel, please check it out and I'm sure you'll love it. You will love it. It's going to be loved. Okay. I'm super (laughs) excited that we got to do this. Uh, Super excited for all of your future endeavors. Plug yourself all the way, all your social media. Where can we find you? Find me on Instagram and Facebook at Instagram.com slash James JHL and Twitter is James Juhyun Lee, which is kind of ridiculous. It's hard to spell, but good luck to you on finding me. And I think that's it, right? YouTube. You know your Patreon. We got to plug the Patreon. Join the Wolf Gang. Get your own logo pin. $5. It's uh, Patreon.com slash James. I believe James JHL. Honestly, if you go to my Instagram and you hit the link in my bio, I have all my links there and you can go check that out i'll link everything for the interview too so you'll you'll find everything in the bio so definitely do that james it was such a pleasure talking to you uh hopefully get to do this again soon in the future and i will definitely be posting everything so everyone can find you and it's gonna be great i will as well thank you so much thank you